My name is Walter Peters. Thanks for spending time here. And we are going to talk about res uh, support resistance trading. Um, if you've been to our sessions before, you know that we like to look at the markets from a naked point of view, so we're not really using indicators. So in today's session, we're going to talk about five ways that you can use support and resistance in your trading. So let's get into it. And if you have any specific charts that you'd like to have a look at today, I'm happy to do that. At the end of the session today, we can look at the live markets and see what uh, what everything what things are looking like from a naked point of view. So it doesn't really matter if you've read the book Naked Forex, but some of the concepts that we talk about today um, will be in that book that that uh, I don't know came out. I don't know when that came out, like six years ago now, maybe something like that. So let's talk about number one. What's the one way that you can use support and resistance? Well, it turns out this is the most popular one. And we know this is the case because when we look at the open position ratios of our fellow retail traders, we know what they do. Anybody know what the retail traders do? What do the retail traders do? Hey, Thomas. What is the, 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 the hallmark of the retail trader? What kind of trades do retail traders take? I'll, I'll narrow it down for you. So like when we look at um, uh, like a market that's really going, like this one right here is kind of a classic example. So if you're looking at, this is the pound Swiss. The pound Swiss has really gone hard. It's gone higher and higher, right? It's making these up moves. What do retail traders tend to do when they see a market like well first of all they're usually looking at the lower time frames when they see this market going up 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 like this typically what they're doing is they're looking to sell uh, same thing here when you see markets go down really hard like this market did this is the cad yen four hour chart typically what you'll notice when the market goes down really hard like that is the retail traders will come in and they'll be going long. They'll try and buy into that. So retail traders typically look for reversals or they like to try and think that they can hook into the end of the trend. Now, the good news is if you do this, you can get a lot of pips, a lot of points. You can bag a big chunk of the market move over a very short period of time because typically when the market's trending, it takes many, many candles for the market to trend and only a few for it to reverse. In fact, we know this quite well in the, in the stock world that a lot of the, 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 the um, strongest or the most, uh, the bullish, the biggest bullish days of the year happen when? After a big fall. And you can look no further than the recent S&P fall down here, this one was on uh, the 24th of December. So we, from from sort of peak to trough here, the S&P fell uh, 23, sorry, uh, $474. Yeah, $474 from December 4th to December 24th. So... Over just a couple of weeks, it fell four hundred seventy-four dollars. But and where were the biggest uh, up days? Well, they were right here. There's one right there, and there's another one right here, right? So the the most bullish days happened after down um, down turns, and when you're trending and when you're going strong, like in a in an upward direction, like this S and P has been for years, last couple of years. It takes a lot of these candles, add them together to get anywhere, to get going anywhere. And you, you'll see these retracements along the way. So what typically happens in the markets with the retail traders is w the retail traders will look at these moves down or potential moves down, and that's where they jump in. They all jump in right here. They all jump in when the market makes a retrace move. I probably got way too many things going on here, but... Um, if you just kind of ignore all my other stuff on this chart and pay attention to that that circle there, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So if you go and look at retail open position ratios, you can get them from Awanda, you can get them from IG Markets, you can get them from Saxo Bank in Europe, get them from many, many, many places 
what you will notice is that when the market is trending, an overwhelming majority of traders are going against the trend. This is human nature. Um, you will see this across markets, across time frames. We've even done this sort of thing at these webinars where we'll, I'll ask traders, I'll say, okay, let's watch the one minute Euro chart. And when everyone's sure that the Euro, that they know which direction the Euro is going to go, that is usually where it turns around. We've done this before, right? I don't know if any of you were there for that one, but you, so what you do is you get like a, here's a one minute Euro chart, right? You place that, you, you put this chart on here and you say, okay, when are we sure as a group, when are we sure what's going to happen here? And when we know what's going to happen, that's usually the turning point and we're, we're the majority is wrong. <laughs> so you can use this to your advantage and you, and what I like to do is I like to use the open position position ratios as a kind of strength of trend. So when a lot of people are going against the trend, the trend is still intact. When a lot of people are, you know, sort of wishy-washy, it's about a 50-50 split, then that's not really, that's the end of the trend. That's, you know, that's a directionless market. So a lot of these moves that you see, these pullback moves, that's where the retail traders get in. That's where our fellow traders are getting in to their trades. So what does that mean for support and resistance? So let's pull one up. Does anyone have a chart that you want to use? We can use your chart. You, you give me a chart and we'll use your chart. I don't want to cherry pick examples here. I want to show you that this is applicable to any market. So if you can pull up uh, or give me a, a suggestion, I'm happy to use it. And we'll have a look at number one way to use support and resistance in your trading. Any, um, I know there's a delay here, but does anyone have a currency pair that you'd like to look at? Or, or you know, it doesn't have to be currency. It can be S&P or Bitcoin or gold or whatever, silver. It can be any of those CFDs as well. I'm happy to use, okay. I'm happy to use the... Canadian dollar. Okay, cool. Let's do it. All right. So this is the Canadian dollar. This is the four hour chart. And I am going to go with black and white template. And um, so what, so let's say I'm trading the four hour chart. So what I would typically do is I'll go to the daily and I'll just draw in, I'll, I'll zoom out a bit. I'll go to the daily and I'll draw in all of my support and resistance levels based on the action that I see here on the daily line chart. The line chart is gonna make it very clear where they're at. Line chart's the way to go here. The, um, the, um, bum, 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 bum. Line chart, like this. There's another one up here. And there's going to be a few that I miss, and I'll need to put those in here, like right here, and possibly right there. See, support there becomes resistance there. Support in March or April becomes, uh, sorry, becomes support later in uh, a year later, basically, or two years later, sorry. All right, so now that I've got my daily zones in, I'll drop down to the four-hour chart. <clears throat> and you can see where we're at here. So this is one way to get your zones on your chart. You might have to fine tune them, or make sure am I missing any or anything like that here. Sometimes you'll miss some and they'll become obvious on your, your chart that you're trading. So like, like obviously you got support here and resistance there, that sort of thing. All right, so one way to trade this is we just wait for the market to reach the support and resistance zone and print a, a, uh, uh, a pattern or a, a reliable pattern. So a catalyst, we talk about, I talk about these in the Naked Forex book. And w when you see these, really the key is to make sure that they happen in the right place. Because you can, you can take them anywhere on the chart, but if you do that, what will typically happen is if, if you take them anywhere on the chart, you will um, you will not do nearly as well as if you 
use these zones. So what I like to do is I wait for it to get to the level. So for example, on this chart, I'm gonna pull back here and go, all right, um, do we get a, when the market hits, here's one right here. So when the market hits this right here, right here, boom. This is a, a it's a bearish big shadow right here, and it's right on our, our resistance level. So the market moves up, it hits this level, and then it prints a bearish big shadow. This candle actually engulfs one, two, three, almost four of the previous four hour candles, which is great. So I put my stop loss above that bearish candle. I put my sell stop below the low, and I'll probably have to target down here to make it worth my while. I wouldn't be able to target here. That wouldn't be high enough on the reward to risk scale. So I'd, I'd probably target down here at 2882. So now what happens here, as you can see, is the market never trades low enough to get into my sell stop. But that's okay, it was still a signal. And you can see after a couple of candles, I would probably throw, pull the, the order off and say, forget that. There's no reason to, you know, to keep watching that or have that order in. So um, this one didn't really uh, trigger, but this is the kind of setup that I'd be looking for. It doesn't really matter, like the result isn't, you know, we don't wanna let the result color our analysis. Really, it's more about what we see and not what we think. And when you have hindsight, you can, can certainly change uh, what you think. So you have to be careful on that one. Let's go back here and see if we can find any other ones. I'll show you one, you see here. Again, so in this case, what we're doing is we're waiting for market to get to support and resistance level and then print a pattern. So here's one right here. So this one right here is a, um, this is a tricky one right here. This is a, what we call a pseudo kangaroo tail. And I'll talk about what's, what's nice about it and what's not so nice about it. So the, the nice thing about this signal here is that the tail has extended beyond all of these highs over here. What that means is there are orders sitting up here and this tail actually um, triggered a lot of those orders that were sitting in this above here, above here, here, and here. So the, it was nice that the market was able to do that to, to, to push through those and catch all those orders. Now, it's technically not a true kangaroo tail because the open and the close are not inside the previous candle's range. So the rules for the kangaroo tail are what? Well, we print on the zone, which it's done here. This is a simple reversal kangaroo tail. And then the open and the close are in the bottom third of the candle, check. The open and the close um, are on the other side of the zone. You could, you could certainly say that, I mean, depending on how you wiggle this zone. Uh, but certainly, you know, they're on the other side of the zone. The tail is on one side and the open, the, the open, the close on the other side. And then um, the open, the close should be in the previous candle's range. That's where we fail. So instead of calling this a kangaroo tail, a simple reversal kangaroo tail, it's a pseudo kangaroo tail. And typically, the, re the only rule that is broken with the pseudo kangaroo tail is this one, which is that the open and the close are not inside the previous candle's range. Now this will often happen when the previous candle is really small. This candle, however, the previous candle is not really small, it's about a, a normal size candle. So this would qualify as a pseudo kangaroo tail and not only that, but the next candle actually trades lower and would trigger a sell. So this would be a sell signal right here. Now there's a couple of things I don't like about this. One is that we do have, um, Although it's nice actually that this candle extended higher than this high, but it's not really very nice that the fact that this high, that we had a blow off top up here. It would have been nicer if the market had stayed below here. Um, the other thing is we've, this is the third touch. So, you know, well, you could count it as the fourth or fifth touch if you count one, if you count this as a touch, two, three, four, five. And I don't, I don't really go for trades when it's, we have you know several touches in quick succession because usually that means breakout. But I can see where one would argue that this is these are not in quick succession. Usually when we have multiple touches in quick succession, that'd be like if you had three, four, or five touches between like this candle and that candle. So a large majority or a large minority of the of the candles are actually pushing into the zone 
And that's not really the case here because how many candles do we have? From this touch here to the kangaroo tail, you have 81 candles. And of those 81 candles, five of them basically push into the zone. So it's not really that many. But we did trade lower here. That would trigger the sell stop. The stop loss goes up here. And we did get to the next zone down here. So in this case, this trade would have been worth approximately 3R. Um, so three times the risk on that one. If you had waited for the next level, it would have been even better. But there's no, you know, or, or some sort of trailing exit. Maybe you would have been out here or out here, perhaps, depending on the trailing exit. Possibly been stopped out here or here or maybe somewhere in this area, depending on uh, the rules of your trailing exit. So that's that's one. It's just simply wait for the market to hit support and resistance level and print a, a reliable pattern of reversal signal. All right, shall we move on to number two? The number two method for trading uh, support and resistance is a little bit dicey. However, and, and the reason why it's dicey because it's it has a typically has a low win rate. However, the good news is uh, with the low win rate comes very high reward risk. So let me give you an example of one of these. Let's say that you are, well, actually, what I want to do here is I'm going to bring up, I'm going to bring up a, I'm going to bring over a, uh, a screen here so that you can see it. But I want to, um, yeah, here we go. All right, I'm gonna bring this screen over so you can see it. Hopefully, in theory, yes, you can. Okay, now what I wanna do is bring up, the CAD Yen. Now you can see my screen here that has the CAD Yen. Uh, this is the, the page here and it tells you how many retail traders at this broker are long the CAD Yen. Does everyone see this? Is this a uh, something you can see? Hopefully, yes. Cool, great, excellente. Okay, cool. Well, uh, what what this is is a uh, it's a count of you know who who are who, who is uh, doing what. And if I look at my charts on the CAD yen, what you're going to notice where is it? Here it is. What you're going to notice is it's been it's been going pretty it's been going up pretty hard since this this bounce down here, and all of our trader buddies, they're all in on it. They're all going long. Now, normally, uh, when you see everyone going long, it means we're in a downtrend. And I would actually argue that that's still the case here, that we're still making lower lows and lower highs. In fact, this high right here is still higher than the high that we've made right here. I know we bounced really hard off that little spike down there, that long-tailed kangaroo tail, so that's definitely true, but I would argue that we're simply in a retracement that is going against a downward trend. So, well, okay, that's cool, Walter, but what do we do about it? Well, one way to take advantage of this would be to do a very aggressive blind entry trade, and I'll show you what they look like I'll show you the advantages that these have and the disadvantages because it's not all roses. So let's have a look at this four hour chart and you know what, where is it potentially, where is, where could I take a blind entry? All right, let me actually just get rid of these. I'm just gonna get rid of all this stuff. I should have just started with a fresh chart. Okay, so I'll go daily and I'll go to the line chart because I'm going to use the four hour chart here. So I'm going to draw in my levels here. So you can see we've got uh, resistance and support there. We've got support and resistance there. We've got resistance up here at the top. We've got support down here and certainly have support down here as well. And there's going to be 
you know, there are going to be a few in here as well in this middling area in there. Okay, so boom, and now I go to my four-hour chart. Now, what I see here is quite clearly uh, I have a couple of different spots where, you know, if the market were to get there, I have a, I have a reasonable expectation that it's going to run into some trouble. One spot is going to be right here. Remember, we know that most retail traders are going long, and most retail traders are going against the trend. So I have a what could be going on here actually is that we're simply in consolidation after the 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 you know this retrace move in the uh, hang on here go like this. So we're simply in consolidation here. I'll get rid of that little box there. Uh, and and what's happening is it's you know it might probe the upper limit of the box a few times and the lower limit a few times and that's going to break out and it's going to go fall lower again. So one way to take advantage of this would be to place a standing sell limit right about here at 82.55. So what you would expect is that just like the market came up here and fell, it would come up here, it would spike into this. And I might use, on the CAD I might use like a 50 pip stop or something like that, a 60 pip stop, fairly tight. And then I would look to take profit all the way down here. So if you're thinking about this, it would be, you know, if you had 50 pips of risk here and you were selling there around 82.45 or so, really it should be, you know, 82.50. I try and push them as high as possible. That would be f risking 50 pips to make 270. Or you could even target down here risking 50 pips to make 410 so you're that's 8r so that's a pretty good result to make you know 5 to 8r on a trade like that and the like the good news is there isn't really much to it all you really do is you just watch the charts find where you think you know you've got a handle on the direction and open position ratio for me is a really good tool for that and then you 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 just put your orders in at the at the at the really strong zones and let it let it go and see what happens and you kind of have to be aggressive with your targets because otherwise you end up with uh, you know if you have these two R wins and stuff like that it's you're just going to be treading water you really need because a lot of these get stopped out you really need to take advantage of the winners when you get them so um, and sometimes you have to take it twice like sometimes it'll go up there it'll spike into it it'll hit it. And then it'll stop you out, and then it'll come back down, come back up and hit it again or something, and you get it on the second one. But as long as the market's respecting the zone, um, even if you get stopped out, it still shows that, yep, there's a memory there. The market remembers that you know this is an area of, of potential reversal. So that's another way to trade support resistance, to simply use blind entries. So I can show you some more, too, that might, might be of interest. Like the Euro Aussie is, is in a good spot too. I'll show you here. Where is my Euro Aussie chart? The Euro Aussie is, there it is, boom. Okay. So the Euro Aussie right now, ah, we've got our bullish candle, nice. This is the first one we've had in a while. So if you look at the numbers, and I'll show you the numbers right now, everyone can see this, right? Everyone can see the uh, open position ratios here. Just want to make sure that's true. The Euro Aussie turns out that 79%. Now that's pretty good. It's been in the 80s this week. I can attest to that. It's been in the 80s. So uh, most of our traders are short the Euro Aussie. So what does that mean? Well, it means the Euro Aussie is probably in a bit of an uptrend and that we're just pulling back here. We've made this strong move up. I know we did the big spike here with the Aussie and the yen spike, right? So we, we've, we've, we've fallen a bit. But now it's, it's telling us that if we're in a pretty good spot here, and we are in a pretty good spot, I can tell you, these highs over here, this touch here, that breakthrough and retouch there, that resistance there, that resistance there, this is a great spot for support to come in. And so one way to trade this blind touch would be to just buy the Euro Aussie right now. So buying the Euro Aussie right now, I mean, this isn't really a blind touch now because we actually have a bullish candle. So this would be a risk of about 80 pips. 
So I'd want to see this go, if I'm risking 80 pips right now, I'd probably want to see this go at least 500 pips. Um, that would get me 6R. If I went for 490 pips up here, that would get me 6R on that one. Um, so that's another way to trade support resistance to simply take blind entries. All right, any questions about that? If there are any questions, you can just put those in the chat box there. Happy to uh, clarify that. So that's number five way to trade. Oh, sorry, number two out of five to trade support resistance. Number three, multiple touch. Now, this is one of my favorites. It kind of... Uh, this this will this is a great clue. Let me see if I can just pick a random chart here that I, I don't really have a. Uh, let's go with the exotics. How about the Mexican peso? Now that's interesting. The old Mexican peso. All right. I'm going to use the Mexican peso here, and all righty. So the way that this works is we say, all right, if we're getting a lot of touches and it keeps touching a support resistance level, it's likely that we're going to break that support and resistance level. And even more, if we get a lot of many touches on support uh, and resistance in quick succession, it's quite likely that we're going to break through and, you know, the market's just going to... Um, crack it and keep going. So that support resistance levels isn't gonna hold. And the clue is this, multiple touches in quick succession. So if I have, say, 20 candles and nine of those candles are banging up against the support resistance level, that's a clue, right? So multiple touches, quick succession. You're always gonna have multiple touches on a zone. The key here is, do they happen in a short time period, right? Over, a, you know, is it, is it something that's happening rather quickly? So if you look at, um, well, obviously when you're trending like this, this is this is reminiscent of the, the Darvis box. Everyone familiar with Darvis boxes? That's basically what the market's doing right now on the Mexican peso. These are Darvis boxes. So Darvis boxes, Darvis, uh, Nicholas Darvis was a dancer who traveled the world and he traded the trend uh, with, sh with stocks back in the 50s. He traded shares back in the 50s. And he basically looked for this pattern right here, which is you wa wait for the market to consolidate like this and then hop up or hop down, and you just keep trading these boxes. So here we are in another box. So this, and the, you know, the same principle applies that we've been talking about here. Multiple touches in quick succession equals breakout. So what do I know about this box right here that we're on. Well, I know that one, two, three, four, five, five out of five out of like ten candles have been touching the support level. So what are the chances that the market falls through the support level? Pretty good. Pretty good. So uh, I could put a sell stop order right below the lowest low here, you know, right around this area. And that sell stop would get me in at 18.9342. 18.9342. And that would be a sell on the Mexican peso against the USD. Right? Uh, but it doesn't have to be like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be a trend trade. You can actually trade breakouts when the market hits a support resistance level over and over and over again. It's usually a pretty good sign that it's going to break. So let's see here. Like this, this is this is a good one. Uh well, let's see here. This is a this is a uh, yeah. Some of these are going to look a lot better actually on the lower time frame. I can do that. Let me let me back this one up. So what you're looking for, and a good there's another really nice uh, um, pattern that you'll see with these uh, these breaks is where the market squeezes up against the support and resistance level. This is a classic sign of a breakout. Um, it, you can get fake outs, but 
I mean, it's always the case. But um, if they break out, if they if they keep hitting it over and over and over again, you get a, you often get really nice breakouts. Um, you know what? This chart's kind of I don't. It's just the the chart's so wiki. I don't like it. I'll, I'll maybe go daily or something. So let's say, for example, where we are right now. So let's go to the four hour and we'll say, look, we're right here. The longer it sits here on this support level, the more likely it is to break and go lower. That's the general principle at work. And this happens across the board. It doesn't really matter what you're looking at. Um, let's see if we can find another one like New Zealand CAD. New Zealand CAD. So New Zealand CAD is there's a little head and shoulders there. That would be looking really good on the one hour. But if you go to the one hour here, we'll see. Here, this is a, I know this is a head and shoulders pattern. You got your shoulder, your head, and your shoulder here. But look at, look at how many of these candles have just keep banging against the support level. And then, boom, it cracks and it goes. So a, a good way to trade this would be to trade the pullbacks now. So you're gonna, what you're going to see most likely is you'll see steep pullbacks like this, where the market goes up like that, and then falls again. And so an opportunity to get into this market would be when the market falls down to here, retraces, falls like that. So this is another example. Again, the way that I do this is I count the number of touches over the number of candles. So in this case, we have how many candles? We have 13 candles. And of these 13 candles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them basically touch the level. If you add these over here, it'd be 18. Eight out of 18 candles are touching the zone. This was the uh, the clue. <laughs> Once it did that, you know, okay, it's going to break, and it did. It closed down below the zone, and then clearly we're off to the races. So that's a great example of the multiple touches in quick succession. All right, let's move on to the next one. So we've talked about patterns at support and resistance, which is kind of the typical way to trade naked. Then we've talked about blind trades, which are very aggressive. Uh, you have to have a really high reward risk ratio because they're typically going to have a low win, win rate. And then you have multiple touches that are going to tell you, oh, yep, we're going to break out here. We keep sitting on this zone. It's going to break. But there's another one that I like, and this is the, the, the breakout uh, pinch. So the breakout pinch is a great way to take advantage of a breakout, like say if you missed it. So like that New Zealand cat is a great example of this. So we see the New Zealand cat, we go, oh, it broke through here. Wow, I can't believe I missed this one hour head and shoulders. Well, if you're not watching the one hour charts, you're forgiven, but guess what? Now we can wait for it to come all the way back up here and blammo, right about there. We would expect it if, if it, if it were to retrace all the way back up to the neckline here, to the support and resistance level, if it comes all the way back up here, that would be a spot for a trade. You, you might take a blind entry too. You might just go boom, take it and not wait for the candle to print bearish or to print a long wick or whatever. You just take it as soon as it gets there. So that would be what the pinch looks like. And these happen all across the board. My friend Dennis actually... Uh, shared with me how he trades these. It's a really cool way to trade breakouts. And a lot of traders, like they, they know that this is what happens, but they don't really understand the rules. So the rules with this is that you, you, you really, like this is a breakout, right? This is a breakout waiting to happen. Everyone see this? This yen chart, this is going up. We, we, I mean, this is pretty obvious. Chances are, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like look, one, two, three, four, five. So we have how many candles here? Eight candles, and of the eight candles on this support and resistance level, one, two, three, four, five, like five out of eight, six out of eight of these candles are pushing up against the support and resistance level. So what is gonna happen? Well, most likely it's gonna break, it's gonna pop with a really big candle, it's gonna go higher, and then at some stage it's gonna run out of steam, and it's gonna fade back down to this level, and that, my friend, is where the trade is. The bounce is right blammo, right there. So the reason why we wait for this is we want to confirm that, yes, this level is still important. Now, occasionally, and I actually just saw an example of this on another chart, 
I think it was on the Mexican peso, but occasionally what will happen is you'll squeeze, this is actually called a squeeze play when you have this little triangle wedge thing here up against the level and against the support and resistance level. Occasionally, what will happen is you might get like a long-tailed kangaroo tail as the breakout candle. Well, that means it's a fake out. That means it's time to fade the breakout, right? Or you get a big bullish candle and then the very next candle is a big bearish one and it closes back down on or below the zone. That's another, you know, you would add those candles together and you would get a long-tailed kangaroo tail. So in either case, if the market doesn't stay up there above the zone for a few candles, you know, you know that this is a false breakout. It's not going to survive. But in most cases, you're going to see several candles, one, two, three, four, five, 10, 15 or more, where it's spending time up here. It's only once it makes the pullback that you're going to be ready that you, that, you know, that's where you take the trade, basically. Now, I am not convinced that the yen, let's have a look at the yen. Because we had our little freak out the other couple weeks ago, the yen got really strong. But I think you'll notice that most of our retail friends are actually going to be uh, going long. Eh, no, it's about 50-50. Yeah, I don't get excited unless it's over 70%. So 59% is nothing. So this is a directionless market, and I would still expect this to pop and go higher. The pattern says that it's going to go higher, and I think it will. Uh, the key really for the for the pinch is what does it look like here? And you really want to see kind of a bullish candle, like a like an engulfing candle, a bullish big shadow, a... Um, I'm obviously talking about a buy trade. You can get the same setup on the sell side. But a kangaroo tail, something like that would show, yep, this is this is a breakout. This is the way it's going. This is definitely the trade that you know I want to take here. And the key here, this is the key. The key is that you must spend several candles above the zone. Must, must see several candles on other side of zone. Uh, if you don't have several candles on the other side of zone, in other words, if it goes, it breaks, and then it comes back down quickly within you know two or three candles, bad news. That's usually going to mean fake out. Not always, but usually that means, yep, time to sell this sucker. So I would not uh, deal with that. I would not want to mess with the old... Uh, uh, bounce like that. You know, you you want you want it to spend several time uh, several candles up there before it bounces. So, uh, let's see if I can find you a good example of what this looks like. Kind of a directionless market, isn't it? Very choppy lately, anyway. Uh, so here's here's one that here's one that happened. It um, didn't give us a really clear uh, candle. Probably. So here's your here's your floor right here at one eleven twenty two. I'll show you. So here, the market comes down, it hits the level, comes back down again, it sits there, multiple candles are sitting there, it's sitting there, finally it breaks. So now you're going, okay, where's the pinch? This one was a bit tricky because it didn't really give you a nice bearish candle when it came back up. Comes back up, finally hits it. That's about as close as you're going to get to a uh, candle, like a signal. I don't know if I, I probably would not trade that because of this bullish candle before it. So that wouldn't, that wouldn't interest me as a trade. Probably I would be getting in a, a little bit late. Well, some people would consider it late. I would probably be getting in after this candle here. And I might even not just get in on the close. I might even just put my sell order down here below the low. So I might not be triggered, triggered until this candle. Because this bullish candle tells me that it could be just sitting here and ready to hop up again. So that would be very um, difficult to trade this one. Because it didn't give you the big, you know, the nice big signal right here that you'd like to see. All right. Questions on that one? Is that one making sense? We'll move on to the next one. 
I know we're running out of time here, so I want to make sure we get through all of them. Um, so that was the pinch. So we talked about number one, reversal pattern on support resistance. Number two is a blind touch trade. Number three is the multiple touch breakout, which is usually three or more touches in quick succession. Number four was this one was the pinch, which is the breakout and retouch. And then the last thing I want to talk about here is the, is the target. So you can use support and resistance as a target. Let's say, I'm just going to pull up a fresh chart here. I don't even know what to... Let's say I'm... Actually, I am in a trade on the Swissy. So let's say that I'm going to go ahead and trade the Swissy. All right. Um, which I am, by the way. I am I am in a trade on the Swissy. Uh, it's on the 8-hour chart or... Sorry, the 12-hour chart. But um, So the question is, you know, like... I've shorted the Swissy here. Uh, you can see kind of a like a um, a bearish wick here. It, it looks a lot better on the twelve hour candle, but I'm not gonna my I'm not gonna switch over to the twelve hour candle right right now. But basically, um, the the question is, well, where do I go? Like, where do I hold out for? What where's the profit here? Well, the easiest place is going to be right here, where we had the lowest close. Right there, that was the lowest close. That's the support level that I will use. Just like I use the highest close as resistance up here, there's my highest close right there, I use the lowest close. So I would be looking for, to take profit all the way down here around 108.50, right? So that would be uh, a simple way to use support resistance. You can see, I wanna point out that, look at this, the market touched this level way back in April didn't it? April, sorry, May, back in early May, it touched it. And let's go back even further, because now I'm curious. And then it hit it again in April of 2017. And then it hit it as resistance back here in July 2016, and, and on and on and on, you can you get the idea. So that's kind of the... Um, the last way to use support resistance is it the, the market tends to you know, it's, it's like a magnet. It's going to get sucked down here at some stage. It may still stop me out. My stop's up here. I might still get stopped down on this trade, but um, wherever it goes, if it, you know, when it goes to your, and I like to also, when it goes to your targets, if you use support resistance, it's kind of like a magnet. It kind of gets drawn in there, just like it, it will get drawn in up here. This floor over here becomes a magnet for these candles down here. So, I like to use uh, support resistance as targets, and this is definitely a, a possibility down here at 108.45. Now, because my level's at 108.45, I would probably take tar uh, take profit at 108.55. I like to go about 10 pips or so above on a on a support target or 10 pips below on a resistance target, just because I know that the market's likely to, um, you know, it. it not likely, but it could possibly just brush up against it and then zoom off. Like we said, you know, beer bellies. Beer bellies, right? The support resistance is beer bellies. Pushes into it. Sometimes it'll push into it far and then bounce off it. Sometimes it'll just kind of brush up against it and, and jump away. So, hey, guys, any, any markets that you want to see right now before we shut it down, any uh, live charts that you like or whatever, I, I mentioned that I have a, uh, a Swiss yen short in right now. Any other ones that you like? Any other uh, potential uh, setups? Or uh, questions about any, any of this stuff that we talked about? So just to recap, the five different ways of using your support and resistance. Number one, we wait for the market to give us a repeatable, reliable pattern on support resistance. Typically reversal patterns, this is how a lot of traders trade naked. Number two, we use a blind touch. We, we say, oh, well, this is a, a really strong level. I'm going to hang my hat on this level. If I've got, especially if I've got a reason to believe the market's trending in one direction, I can use this to my advantage and, and take these blind touch trades. Number three is I can watch the market make multiple touches, three or more in quick succession. That usually means breakout. And, you know, the uh, squeeze play is a, sp a specific subset of that type of breakout. We can also use the pinch, which is a breakout plus a retouch. It's got to spend several candles on the other side of the zone before it does make that pinch, though. And finally, uh, we can use we can use tar um, support resistance as target levels. So we we assume that the market's going to be magnetized 
and approach those levels, and that's where we look to take profit. So hopefully this makes sense. I really appreciate all of your time. Thank you so much, guys, for spending time here today. Hope to see you at another webinar, and I wish you happy trading. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.